Ashley Victoria Robinson coming to you live from the Poppers here at Emerald City Comic Con. And I am joined by an absolute legend and superstar, one of the architects of Three Worlds, Three Moons, Mike Huddleston. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. How has your Emerald City Comic Con been so far? So far, it's great. Um, we're getting to connect with a lot of fans and readers. That I mean, that's really the value of, of these shows. So it's it's been great so far. Have you had any surprising feedback from fans? Um, I've been surprised already talking to some fans that have had real emotional connections to the stories and art we're doing, and that's not anything you ever really think that's going to happen when you're making fantasy work. But mm. some people really connect to it in a personal way and that's gratifying but it's always really surprising that is so lovely and <laughs> i have to ask everybody if you could live on any of the three worlds or three moons which are you living on and why this is tough because i'm bad with names <laughs> and i don't remember the names of all the planets but um the thing i like about the planets that we're doing is there's always a mix of uh, magic and technology um so i i couldn't really pick one but all of them I would like to live on, and that mix of what we're designing makes all those places exciting for me. Are you a little bit more sci-fi, or are you a little bit more fantasy? Um, sci-fi, I could get nerdy about the elements, but I also like Star Wars, which is fantasy, so I, if there's spaceships in it, I'm gonna like it. <laughs> that explains a lot of the design elements, particularly yeah, in yes. Foundations. <laughs> so we talked to Mike Del Mundo and he really lauded the collaborative process on this project. Yeah. Can you tell me your side? What is collaborating on something as expansive as this like? Well, working with Mike has been great, but often it's like someone just throws you in a cage with a genius and you're like, <laughs> you're just trying to keep your head above water because you know he's going to deliver something amazing. So you're really trying to not right be embarrassing. <laughs> but it's been, it's been great. Um, there's a lot of times that I think we've fed each other um, ideas that we wouldn't have on our own. And I know I have a whole direction that I'm trying to pursue with my work inspired by what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So it's been great. I've never had an experience like this with another artist. So it's, I love it. What has it been like collaborating with Jonathan Hickman? Well, I mean, Jonathan and I, we just, we went from working on decorum mm -hmm. right into working on this. And it's, it's been the best professional experience I've had. It's the most freedom I've had creatively. Um, and it's the most contribution I've ever made to a story that I'm working on. So I love it. I, I'll do anything with Jonathan. One more question about collaboration. You're also managing a lot of talent and a lot of other creatives on this project. What is that like and how is that different from a traditional maybe like artist writer relationship? Well, one of the experiences that we got to have is we got to feel what um, editors often feel like because we were sending work out and scripts out and we get to be excited when the pages come in. Mm -hmm. And as artists, that's not an experience we ever got to have. And I'm like, okay, I understand what the editor job is and why it's appealing to people. So. Finding artists and has been exciting. Seeing what they create is exciting. And also knowing sometimes who the artist is, we can custom like what we're making to fit their strengths to make everyone look as good as possible. So that's been different, but it's been, it's been good. Are there any standout moments of when you opened a file and you were like, wow, my brain has exploded? Um, there's a story we did of all the, the gods in the universe and, and Nimit, uh, his illustrations for that were no one expected it to be as like mind blowing and as cosmic as, as the pages he turned in. So for me, that's that was like the big exclamation point of like the first year. That's they do look amazing. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. So the official description says Mike Huddleston designs every element of the three worlds, three moons universe. What okay. is that like? What is some of the most challenging? I know you're ready for this question. Right. Well, <laughs> the challenging thing is because uh, we're designing we're designing a fantasy universe, but some there are still practical elements mm -hmm. that we have to manage um, just because there are human beings in these stories. And so sometimes <laughs> balancing what the script says with some sort of visual representation that's not so outlandish that it takes people out of the story. Mm -hmm. So finding that line where it's fantasy but still relatable, I think that's been the most challenging in general. That's fair. Very, very fair. So who are some of your favorite characters? We. Uh... Before we started, we heard a little bit about the whales. What are some of your favorite characters that you've created? Maybe some that are coming up that folks can look forward to. Actually, my favorite characters so far are um, that, some that Mike Delmundo designed, and they're in Foundations. Nice! And, and they're, they're the wizards. Um, and I, I don't know all their names either, but, <laughs> but we were just talking uh, at the table before we got here about some of his concepts and, and how they came together. But 
they were so abstract and so crazy and things I would never have designed in a million years. Mm -hmm. So I, I love them and I'm looking, I'm hoping to get a story where I can draw them a lot. I think, I think we can make that happen. Okay, okay. good. I believe in you. Good. <laughs> Is there any of your designs or maybe uh, scenes that are coming up in future issues of foundations or anything else that you want people to keep an eye out for? Um, there is a, a larger story that I've already started working on, and there is a there's a squid a squid racer that I think is pretty exciting that, that people will see. So I'd, I'd say that. Now I would be remiss if I let you go without asking about the strain. Oh wow! And okay. Your work on the strain has purportedly affected a lot of the other adaptations or some adaptations still to come. So what was it like? knowing that you played such an important part on the ongoing development of a project that even years later now is still in, still in the milieu? Well, the continuing influence was a surprise. Um, when we started translating the novels, there wasn't any TV shows or anything happening. And once that started gearing up, we were talking to the concept artists and they were using some of our designs directly to go into the show. It was a surprise. I, I think the main feeling I had is since I had cast that whole series to mm -hmm. draw it when I, it was difficult for me to watch the show Aww. because none of the actors were exactly the way I had imagined them and I ended up enjoying the show but at first it was difficult because I felt a real ownership over who those characters were rightly so yeah but it's but it was it was neat it was really cool to see stuff translated into these other medium so working on this project you are also managing a lot of talent you are a talent yourself what is your advice to future talent who want to break into comics um, I, I think if you want to break into comics now, because there's so many artists who are working at such a high level, I would say really develop your own voice. Mm -hmm. Steer away from any sort of house style, because I think you're just going to disappear into a, a wash of people. So really try to find what's distinctive about your work and really lean into that as hard as you can, because that's what's going to make people notice you and that's what's going to get you a chance to really shine somewhere. And here in the pop first, we celebrate the best in TV, movies, and comics. <laughs> so what are you geeking out about right now that you're not working on? Um, I think the last thing I really loved is um, I liked Lightyear. I, liked, yeah. I, I thought that was fantastic. Um, again, has spaceships in it <laughs> and time travel. So I, there's no way I wasn't going to love it. So I, that was the last like nerdish thing I was really excited about. I love that answer. Mike Huddleston, thank you so much for joining us here today in the Pop First. Where can everyone find you online? Where can they read everything that you're working on? And where can they best support you? Um, I'm on um, Instagram. And other than that, like the Three World stuff is on Substack. And I would say that's, that's the best place to find the new work we're doing. Um, and if someone wants to subscribe, whether, you know, that's, that's the place where they're going to find all the new work, all the new concept stuff that, that all of us are doing. So I'd say that's the best place to support us. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us here in the Pop First. I have been Ashley Victoria Robinson, and we will see you next time.